Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so in the previous lesson, we went over the basics of the uh, Lotka Volterra Predator Prey Model, and we used um, an example system uh, looking at um, fish populations and bear populations. And so just give a quick review. So we have, um, we have X is our variable for the uh, fish population and Y is the variable for the uh, bear population. And if you guys remember, so we have our regular growth rate with some uh, constant term alpha, and then we have a death a death term here, and the death term actually depends on the uh, population level of the predator. So the uh, bear population in this case, Y, the death term for uh, the fish depends on um, being eaten by bears. So we have Y included in this term here. And then, um, so for the bears, uh, our variable Y, the uh, growth term um, has some constant uh, delta, but the whole growth term actually depends on the bears having enough to eat. So it depends on uh, the level of X to the uh, fish population because the bears need to be able to um, eat the fish uh, for the bear population to, uh, to, keep, to keep growing. And then we have some, uh, some constant, death, uh, a constant death term here, gamma, that's uh, being multiplied by the, uh, the bear population. Um, okay, so that's a quick review. So in this lesson, we're going to be actually um, writing the uh, Python code to simulate the system. Um, so let's get started with that. So the first thing we do, like usual, is just import all the libraries we're going to be using. So we're going to be using NumPy, uh, matplotlib, and then I have this line because ever since I got the new uh, Mac OS, I uh, need to have this line here for uh, matplotlib to work properly. And then um, from scipy.integrate, we're going to be importing the uh, ODE int solver. So that's the uh, solver we're going, to, we're going to use to actually um, solve the ODEs. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we do, like usual, is um, define our initial conditions. So in the previous videos I did, I was always making these like usually zero, zero, but I actually can't do that in this case because if we have zero of uh, if we have zero of these, then they'll just they the populations won't grow because you can't have like the first fish just come out of nowhere or something. So we need to actually start off with positive numbers here so that we have. Um, we have a population to uh, to get things started with, so we're gonna say we're gonna start with ten fish and one bear. Although, if you guys want to think about it like more realistically, we can consider these to be like in the units of like hundreds of animals. So we could say like uh, ten hundred um, ten hundred fish, meaning a thousand fish, or uh, and and one hundred um, bears, just to make things realistic. Um, so maybe I'll just make a note of that here. And uh, yeah, just a reminder so we keep things uh, keep things organized. Um, okay, so the next step is to define uh, the the set of time points we're going to be solving over. So we're going to call this uh, variable t and use numpy dot space. Um, and we're going to say we're, we're going to start from time zero and go to time uh, 50. And we're going to say we're going to have, um, let's just say a thousand time points in here. Although you guys can play around with like different different values here. And also the unit of time, I'm not I'm not specifying the unit of time. It could be like months or something because I'm, I'm not actually like an animal biologist. So I actually don't know what's like a realistic unit of time to even be using. So like maybe like months or possibly weeks. But... For for the for our purposes here, the unit of time isn't like super important, but we can just say like months or weeks or or something like that. Um, and then so next we need to have uh we need to actually define our parameters we're gonna be using. So remember we have um four constant parameters here. So we have alpha, beta, uh, delta, and gamma. So um. I'm just going to be using some parameters I got from Wikipedia actually, because I think I think these will be good to use. Uh, for our purposes here for an example um but like i usually say like you guys should totally like play around with these and try out um try out different values for them and see what happens uh i think that's a really good way to to learn about the models and like gain intuition is to just like play around with the parameters and uh and, and see what happens when you change them around i think that's a good way to learn and then so like we usually do we're just gonna put all of our params in this uh just to get them organized, we'll put them in an array over here. Um, 
just to have them organized to be passed in uh, to our function. And then, so the next part, um, by the way, sorry if I'm going through this a little bit fast. Um, if you guys want like a, a slower, more in-depth explanation, I'll also link to the first video I did on uh, on doing the ODE models in Python. I'm going through it a bit fast because I'm sort of assuming that people have like already seen um, that video. But if you guys if you guys haven't and this is new to you, um, I'll put a link in the description uh, to the first video I did on uh, simulating ODEs in Python. Because um, in that video I go like a little bit slower and uh, more in depth, but going a little bit faster, you're assuming that you guys have uh, seen uh, maybe a couple of these already. So we're going to define our function that's going to be actually um, passed into the ODE solver. So we're just going to call our function sim, and it'll take um, three arguments. So we'll take the uh, variables argument, um, which is going to be this. The variables argument is going to be where we pass in the initial condition, and then t, which is the time points we're solving over. And then uh, params, where we're going to be passing in the uh, params array here. And then so the first thing we do is just define our um, population levels locally within this function. So we're just going to say x is um, x is going to be the first element of the variables argument. Um, so when we pass in the initial condition, we'll be defining x to be 10 here. Remember, x is uh, x is the uh, this population level, and then um, same thing with with y. We're going to be defining y as the uh, second second element in the variables argument, and then this is the uh, bare population level. And then we're going to define all of our um, params locally again. Like we're going to be defining them locally within this function. So um, alpha equals uh, params. Um, so this is just saying that. Basically, we're just we're passing this array into this function and then redefining these uh, these parameters again locally within the function. So that's all we're doing here is just saying that alpha is going to be the first element of this um, params array. Um, beta will be the second element. Um, delta will be the uh, third element. And gamma will be um, the fourth element. Um, okay, so then the next step is to just actually write down these ODEs. So we just need to type these out um, using all of our uh, local variables we've defined here. So um, dx dt equals, um, sorry, let me just make sure I get this right, alpha times x minus beta times x times y, right? Okay. And then dy dt equals uh, delta times x times y minus gamma times y. So let me just make sure I got that right. Um, yeah, it looks good. And then, so the last step within this function is to just return these ODEs. So we're going to put them, um, just going to put them in an array here and return them. And uh, so just one thing here is just make sure the order here, the order of uh, the differential equations we're returning is going to be the same order as is in the uh, variables argument, which will be the same order as is in the uh, initial conditions. So this, this array here, we said um, the first element is fish and the second element is bears. So just make sure we keep that same order here. So uh, dxdt first and then dydt. Um, okay, so that's it. So now it's time to actually um, run the simulation. So we're going to say, we're going to call the output y, which is kind of a convention. And we're going to call uh, the ode int function that we imported, um, we imported up here. So we're gonna, so this takes a couple arguments. So the first argument is the name of the function, uh, the name of our, our function here that contains the, uh, the ODEs. So just the name of the function, sim, um, the initial conditions, y0, that's uh, where we defined uh, the starting points for the populations up here. And then um, t, the time points we're solving over, remember uh, up here. And then the last one is a um, little bit strange syntax, but it's going to be args equals um, parentheses, params, comma. 
and that's where we're going to be passing in um, these uh, param values here. Um, okay, so then, so once we once we get this, um, the output here is going to be um, a uh, a matrix with um, it's going to have a row for um, for each of the time points and a column for each of the um, each of the variables we're looking at. So we're going to have a, an X column and a Y column, and for each of those columns, we're going to have a row for each of the time points that it's being uh, it's being solved at. So then the next thing we want to do is actually um, plot our results. So like I usually do, I'm actually just going to um, copy and paste this part in because um, like I usually tell you guys, like actually I haven't tried to like memorize all the matplotlib stuff just because um, I don't think it's like super important to be like memorizing all this uh, syntax like this. So I usually just, when I'm plotting something, I'll usually just like copy and paste this stuff in from another code. But I will like walk you guys through um, still all these lines and tell you what's happening here. So so we're defining um, a plot with two subplots. And then, so these are the names of the subplots here, ax1 and ax2, um, plt.subplots, and then two, because we want two subplots. So then this line here, um, this line here, uh, that we're calling line one, we're gonna say on ax1, the ax1 subplot, we want to plot. Um, we, want, we want to plot the time points, uh, and then um, for each time point, the value of um, of the fish population at that time point. So, so this matrix here, the Y matrix, our output matrix, we're basically saying that we want every row in the first in the first column. Because remember, we have a column for each um, species we're looking at, and then a row for each time point. So we're saying we want the the first column, um, and then this uh, this colon here means every row in that column. So we're basically saying, um, and then we're going to color it blue, and then we're going to do a similar thing for um, for the uh, second subplot, line two here. So we're going to be plotting the time points, and then for each time point, we want the value of um, the second column of this uh, of this y matrix. We want uh, we we want every row for it. Um, so this will give us the uh, bear population level at uh, at every time point. And then we're going to color this red, and then just put some labels. So we'll label the uh, first subplot um, fish uh, in the hundreds, and then um, second subplot uh, bears in the hundreds, and then plt dot show just uh, showing the subplot. Um, okay, so hopefully this works okay. So let's try uh, let's try running it. Yeah, okay, so it looks like it worked. So as you guys can see, we're getting some oscillations here. So um, it's kind of like I said uh, in the last lesson, like I think it's important to sort of think through this and understand like intuitively what's happening here. So the reason we're getting oscillations is that um, as we get more and more bears, we get more and more bears uh, as the bear population increases, um, but the bears, remember, are eating the fish. So the more bears we have, the less fish we're gonna have. So, so we're getting more and more bears here. You can see like when, when the bears are reaching the peak, the fish population is actually decreasing because they're all getting eaten. But if we don't have enough fish, if the fish, pop, fish population gets actually too low, then we actually get in a situation where the bear population is um, decreasing because the bears don't have enough to eat. So if we get too low uh, fish population, the bear population will also decrease but then as we get decreasing uh, bear population over here, then the fish population actually recovers because they're not getting eaten as much. So we get cycles like this where um, where both populations are oscillating uh, just because of these uh, these uh, predator-prey dynamics. Um, so that's kind of like the intuition behind uh, why we're seeing these oscillations. And then there was one other thing I wanted to show, show you guys. So in the last lesson, we solved for, um, we solved for the steady states and we found that we have a non-trivial steady state uh, when x is um, when x is uh, gamma over delta, and when y is alpha over beta. So I just want to show you guys what happens when we um, when we put in the steady states for the uh, initial condition. So um,
So here I'm just setting I'm setting the initial conditions uh, for the fish to be gamma over delta, and then for the bears to be alpha over beta. And we're just going to try running this, and we're going to see what happens when we um, put the steady state values in uh, in for the initial conditions. So we're just going to see what happens here. So as you can see, when we when we start at the steady state, we just get this um, these straight lines because remember the definition of a steady state is um, when no change is happening. So the derivatives are zero and the populations are just not changing. So um, this is kind of just uh, like showing that the steady states are what we think they are because when we plug in the steady states uh, for the initial conditions, we don't see any change in the populations. Um, but but really like other values besides the steady states, we'll get those uh, oscillations we we're getting before. Um, okay, so that's it for this lesson. So I'll put the uh, code on GitHub um, if you guys want to download it, and the link to that will be in the uh, description. And uh, but yeah, that's it for today. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.